This week on Beyond the Hunt, Rick sets his sights on a true Utah mountain mule deer. He's right there. He's living in that patch of trees. With word of multiple giants living above tree line, Rick spots a massive buck. See a big buck over here, but he might be too far. His journey will be far from easy, testing his physical endurance as well as his instincts. You want to go in light and be willing to stay there all day or maybe even for days at a time. But that's the mystique and that's the draw to the high country. As fall gives way to winter and the weather takes a turn for the worse, Rick's window of opportunity is slowly slipping away. Dobie has grown up here his whole life and he's been on some absolute giant deer and he just got done telling me he thinks he's in the top five of anything he's ever seen. After an amazing mule deer hunt in eastern Colorado, we're back at the R&K Hunting Company to pick up Julie's elk meat, and then I'm heading out into the Utah backcountry in search of a legendary mule deer. When we explain to uh, most of our hunters what, how we go about the processing of the animal, we give them an option to donate a portion or you know a part of their animal to the homeless shelters. And once we explain that to most of the hunters, uh, probably 50% or better will donate uh, most, if not all, of their animal to the to the needy. So we go probably five, six thousand pounds a year to homeless shelters, and that's cool. I think it's crucial for us as hunters to be a part to help someone in need. Sir Edmund Hillary who was the first to set foot atop Mount Everest once said, it is not the mountain we conquer, but ourselves. What excites me about this hunt is it gives me the opportunity to face the high country mule deer, a true survivor, on his terms and in his environment. Historically, the mountains have beckoned to the hardiest of souls. It is the realm of the nomads, cowboys, and sheep herders. Out there, you're alone and must be self-reliant. It is the essence of hunting, and I can't wait to see what I'm made of. And one of the neat things about the R&K Hunting Company is the opportunity to hunt in so many different areas. You know, Julie shot her velvet muley earlier in the season uh, in some lower country. Uh, not in the bottoms, but in the foothills. And, you know, Daniel's also, part of his operation runs clear up into the high country, uh, 11, 12,000 feet. So you're hunting a totally different style. You're hunting high country bucks that really never get to this part of the ranch. I'm excited to try some deer in the high country, and it's always a fun test physically and mentally and you see a lot of bucks that don't see people. That's the mystique and that's the draw to the high country. The first day we checked the place we call the shoots. We saw some pretty good deer, nothing way early after. We were kind of after 180 and above was kind of Rick's mark that he wanted to hit. We probably saw 10 or 15 bucks that first day. Those big deer earlier on like that, first of September, middle of September, they like to hang in those high country shoots. It stays cooler up there and there's a lot of good feed for them. We got the velvet stripping phase going on and so there's just a lot of things that are changing these deer's habits right now. And, uh, but Dobie's got a plan for the morning, don't you? I do. <laughs> We're bailing up over the <laughs> highest point in all the mountains we can see all the way around us, right? We are. We're going to hit the top and by daylight, should be pretty good. I think these deer are feeding more in the mi middle of the day. They're getting up out of their beds. They're starting to rub their velvet right now and holding more into the trees than they were in August. So we'll uh, get after them. Get after them. The fact that 
big bucks are smart is definitely a draw for me because obviously it's the challenge that is out on the table. And uh, I think that's what I like about some of these high country deer. It's amazing what they go through to survive. So I think to me the draw uh, and the attraction to hunt an animal like that is just that much greater. at the lodge, the air is electric with each hunter's dreams of what lies out there in the timber. And as we fill our bellies with amazing food, my thoughts return to the mountains, wondering what is to come. Tomorrow will be a challenging day, no doubt about it, but I can't wait. first day of Rick's hunt, we went up on this high country ranch where you can only drive so far and then you have to, you're, the rest of us just walk. I think you stop at probably 9,000 feet and then you can climb all the way to 12. My quads are screaming and I can definitely feel the thinner air. Now the only thing keeping me going is the mystery of what we're going to find once we get to the top. Doby was glassing one particular part of this bowl and I was looking on the other side and Doby instantly, when Doby has a reaction to a big deer, it's, you know, it's a big deer. Where the furthest is. Uh, just that little two or three patch. Yeah, there's like three patches. Yeah. Patches. Yeah. Right here. Is he? Is he? He's in a great spot, especially with this wind. We got to go all the way down this backside, or do we put him to bed and then go? Put him to bed. When he got pretty fired up about how big this deer was, I knew. No questions asked, grab our stuff. We need to get to that spot. We're gonna cut around this, this big slope right here and get on the back side of that ridge that runs all the way down to it. It's probably what you think a mile and a half, maybe. You don't see a mid 190s typical like that everywhere. That, that's a once in a lifetime buck these days. It's game on on this big buck bedded down in that big block of timber. Dobie and I began to work out a strategy to stalk this giant, but the path in front of us is steep and almost completely out in the open. We worked tirelessly going down, and it's a steep drop into this little patch of timber and our quads are on fire as, you know, I mean, you can just imagine in the high country. And as we made our way down the mountain, the wind continued to swirl, threatening to blow this deer out. The toughest part about getting into a spot like this is just not getting picked off on your way there. You're shining in the sunlight, there's no cover, you're working down through the sagebrush, and you're knowing that a lot of times they've got one of the deer that's bedded up in the shade looking up, watching their backside. Three hundred yards to the tree 
got a lot more topography, a lot more uh, terrain in between him and us, which is awesome. I almost feel like I'm gonna roll the dice and slip up to this next little patch of Quakies and maybe park it there for a while. As the day progressed, these deer really didn't move much. And we were so close that I couldn't have my cameraman move very much and I couldn't move very much. So the opportunity to film them was tough. And it's just one of those deals where um, I've said it before, you can get too close, but we had no other choice. We had, this was the cover that we needed, the shade that we needed. So we're in there, <laughs> but it's gonna be tough. There's no doubt. We've closed the distance within bow range. This could actually work, and I'm, I can't believe it. We got a really good win right now. We think we're within 100, maybe 150 yards of these bucks. We can definitely see the last two trees that they were in when they met it. Have absolutely no reason to get up other than just to move around the tree a little bit in the shade. So, I'm gonna try to get right down here into this little patch of quakies. It's not a lot of cover, but we're just gonna use the shade. This is a once in a lifetime deer, and I can't believe this might actually work. I mean, we've hunted hard, and now we might just get lucky. We finally get to a spot where we're 20 to 30 yards from these bedded bucks and I got a chance. I mean, I can see one deer, part of the other deer, but I can't see the shooter buck. But I know we're in a great spot. All they got to do is feed out either side and I've got a chance. We sat in one spot all day long and waited for that deer to stand up. And he actually had three other pretty good bucks with him. They, they actually stood up in the middle of the day and walked around. Just found another buck right down here. Got really good fronts. Still in velvet, kind of working around this way, but I don't think it's the big one yet. Not heavy enough. We're spending the majority of the day in one spot and I, I watch the deer get up and I'm watching them start to kind of filter out and go down below. There's such a steep drop off of this bench that they're starting to work around the end of this bench and I can just barely see the backs of some of these bucks but I don't know where the big shooter went. If he walked straight away from us, I'm not sure. But all I can tell you is the deer that we could see that came out uh, is not the shooter we're after. Um, and that is disheartening because we spent all day in this spot waiting on one deer and he's not here. You know, that's just how it goes when you're hunting these big mule deer. You know, you can't let it get to you too much. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to uh, see if I could have another run in with that ghost buck, but in the same breath, just to get my eyes on a good mature buck is really all I'm looking for. And if we run into him, that's going to be a bonus. We spent the next couple of days doing a ton of glass and hoping to catch sight of that epic deer. We saw a lot of good bucks, but they were either not mature enough or in a spot that by the time we reached them, they would be totally unstockable. Son of a Sometimes you win, sometimes, a lot of times you lose. I think it was your breakfast burrito, Gobi. Maybe they smelled it. Yeah. I know there's plenty of good bucks in the area, and I know my opportunity will come soon. A couple of years ago, Julie and I were out in the Utah high country. But this time, 
Julie had her PSE bow in her hands. We snuck in this morning. Um, this valley is just full of deer. We were glassing it yesterday. Of course, guess who's the first one to pop up over the ridge? And when he pops up, they're, they're not very far off. There's two shooters in there. Looking back on that experience gets my heart racing and I can't help but keep thinking of the possibilities of what lies out here in the Utah high country. We got a storm moving in. We jumped into this little lean-to that you guys and Jeremy got built up here, which is actually pretty nice out of the wind. And Daniel and Justin have been gracious enough to allow me to, if it works in my schedule, to get to come back and chase one of these big bucks around until the end of October if I can squeeze it in somewhere in there. So that's pretty awesome. I'm extremely grateful. This hunt is certainly not over. Uh, we're going to get into some more big bucks. I think that's a given around here. This is this is Dobie's camo line that he built yesterday, and he decided that <laughs> he fell asleep this way for a long time. <laughs> and you can see, ah, I didn't mean to laugh, but that's funny right there. That's, he says it hurts. It looks it like hurts, it hurts. But it is funny. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea I was being filmed when I was telling him that one. <laughs> so, Toby's like, yeah. Yeah, that's the life of an elk deer guide right there. Out of that, them yellow quakes right in the bottom there. Yeah. After a long week of hunting, Rick and Doby have yet to relocate the ghost buck. If we don't shoot him, I'll eat my sand, my tag sandwich. I've done it many times before. Returning to the high country, they hope to find him or another one of Utah's giants. What do you think? We got a 170, a 180, and a 190. Yep. Facing high altitudes and strong winds, the plummeting temperatures should get these big deer on their feet. I do not hold out for that deer, dude. Oh. The team refuses to stop and hopes Rick gets a chance to harvest one of these epic deer. He's one of the prettiest and biggest deer I've ever seen. This real mass, a lot of mass. Now that the harsh winter weather is setting in, Rick and Doby know that their time is now. You got him? Growing up 
up as a kid, one thing that was constantly drilled into my head was the thought that practice makes perfect. I don't know if there's such thing as a perfect hunt, but having the knowledge to get in close and the confidence in your equipment definitely helps. By no means has this been an easy hunt. The Utah high country puts you to the test, both mentally and physically. But now that the deer are in their velvet stripping stage and spreading out, getting close with my bow is most unlikely. That's why I'm switching to the rifle. For days, we've been searching for what I've nicknamed the ghost buck, and every time, we've come up short. Having some of the best guides in the world, I know we'll find him. Now it's just a matter of making sure that when we do, I'm ready. Well, for those of you who watched last week's episode, you know what's going on. If you didn't, here's the scoop. For the past week, I've been hunting mule deer in the high country of Utah. Daniel and the guys have been patient and have put me on some great deer. We just haven't had the opportunity I'm looking for. As selfish as it sounds, my goal when we set out was to use my bow on one particular buck. But now staring reality in the eyes, I know that the rifle's my best chance. I'm grateful that the guys have been patient, but now it's time to make it happen. Dobie and I are going to make our way back up the mountain and find the ghost buck. Want me to call this fawn in? Yeah. Oh. Come here, buddy. <laughs> Come here. One of Utah's finest right here. I'm calling in fawns. Come on. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. It's the first day. Round number two for my mule deer down here in Utah. There's deer all over in these hills right now, so we're gonna break out the spotters and get the glass. Dobie and I spent the rest of the day glassing in search of our ghost buck, and the buck certainly lived up to his name as we never spotted him. After hours of searching with no signs of our deer, we decided to head back in, regroup, and work out a game plan for tomorrow. This hunt's turning out to be a lot more challenging than I expected. But you know, sometimes you just gotta hunt hard and hope you get lucky. I wouldn't consider myself a superstitious man, but desperate times call for desperate measures. And right now, we need a change of luck. Lugging my camera gear around these Utah mountains has been exhausting to say the least, and I'm thinking a drastic change is all we need. If there's one thing I know, it's the fact that big Utah muleys can't resist the power of the mullet. <laughs> Pretty good storm uh, coming through. We thought it was supposed to be in last night. Lots of moisture, rain turning to snow. We're hoping that we uh, we see some good good movement this morning. Um, if it does sock us in, we're gonna bail off of here and, and uh, it's supposed to blow out on Saturday. Today's Friday, so got two days worth of bad weather. Should be good on the front side and the back side of this front, so see what we see. It's here, almost unfair, is what I thought walking in here this morning. I mean, seriously, like, there's gonna be deer running around all over trying to feed before this storm. And I might have to use those matches. I know. A phone call from Daniel to Dobie carried word of success in these beautiful Utah mountains. It seems several of the other hunters in camp have been able to harvest some great bucks, and I'm certainly not surprised. Come down off the hill. Now it's time to hold my own. We've hunted hard for a week straight. I just hope we can get lucky. I can see him right here, but I don't know if it's him.
brush in there. And there's absolutely no way the day's starting to warm up right now. And I know our thermals. Our thermals, we should be okay, but we got a front coming in. And I think it's just going to keep pushing that wind down in there right now. I don't trust it. It's so thick. I know he's going to see us before we get in there. That front's supposed to hit about 4 o'clock this afternoon. A big temperature swing, high winds, rain turning to snow. I think our best play is going to be to back out of here. Come around the other side and see if we can't drop down in and get low enough and catch him coming working up out of this back up into the sage. He's in a spot that he's got enough cover that he feels safe there. The other day we glassed him and filmed him from about a mile out walking down into this stuff so we know he's right here. This is it's about the only place he can be that's still got some real thick cover. And there's a lot of deer in this canyon, a lot of deer. I hate to be this close and walk away from him, but I'm just afraid if we don't if we don't play it safe, we're gonna end up we're gonna get one chance at this deer, and that's it, I think. So we're gonna back out of here and come in this evening and try to get in here before the storm ends. Hope it works. The water-saturated ground certainly will make things interesting as we work our way back up into the hills. We got a good idea what these deer are doing, and now it's time to make it happen. We're going down into a spot where we've seen him twice. Uh, the wind is sketchy, but it's blowing hard enough today. I think we might have a chance for a good consistent wind. There's water in the bottom. We're going to hope they get tucked up underneath this east face and slope out of the wind. Get on their feet and feed. Maybe snow tonight. So. It's an awesome afternoon out here in northern Utah. Go see if we can't find a giant. I know this giant buck is out there. We saw him just a few days ago. We just gotta find him. After spooking the herd, we continued down into the bottom in the valley, assuming that this big buck was here as well. As we approached a clearing where I could see across the valley, I noticed a large set of antlers. As he emerged onto the hillside, my heart began racing. Finally, this is the giant buck I'm after.
think he's down, isn't he? No, no, no. How far down did he go? Heard it hit. Humped up running downhill. I lost him when he got in the quakies. Ian says that he was packing his leg pretty good. I'm just gonna see if I can get a visual. down and try to get below him so that we keep him above us if he is wounded he's gonna have to go uphill which it's gonna make it really tough for him but uh, that's the plan so we're gonna try to find him before it gets dark to say look at that I'm gonna walk up here behind him oh my goodness what an absolute monarch of a deer <laughs> look at this guys this right here this is what dreams are made of, guys. The R&K Hunting Company. <laughs> we glassed this big giant up about four days ago. And um, he knew he was in a tough spot. We slid down in here last night. The wind was just helter-skelter. And we were up in here this morning, actually. Look at this from the back. <laughs> Look at that. We were up in here this morning, and I just told the guys, I said, I just got this feeling that he's right here. And we were right up on the face of this, this ridge here, glassing, trying to catch these deer. And um, get you a better look at him here. Look at that. And so we left, this front pushed in, and Daniel was gracious enough to let me buzz out here, Ian and I. They got busy and uh, we got on some more deer over here and uh, just walking down in here where we wanted to get and it was like the deer gods sent him up the ridge that we were on and we glassed him and uh, I don't even know, I'm just speechless after this. It's just one of those deer that um, I may never get to shoot another deer like this again in my lifetime. An absolute monster out here in Utah. The R&K Hunting Company. Julie's taking a great buck, a great elk, and now's my turn. Right there, guys. <laughs> Look at that character. The quadrupod. He is absolutely beautiful. to bail Rick out in this deer hunt. We don't get involved in the fun. We just get to do the extraction. That's how Rick is, it's okay. Oh, it'll be fun. I hope he gets bucked off. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Got Daniel and Jeremy here. We're gonna run up in here and we'll pull him out. Can't wait to see him again, actually. Didn't sleep much last night, so. 
he's in a tough spot. We either quarter him and pack him on pack frames or take the horses. We opt to take the horses, so. Uh, beautiful morning. We had a storm push through last night, as you've seen. But today, blue sky, sunshine. Nice day to go pick up a big mule deer buck, eh, Daniel? Hey. <laughs> Think, Goldie. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, sir. He's a hog. I know. <laughs> you hold this and you can follow me. 